In this video on the ComGo Z1 laser, I'm going to be making a spoil board, attach the laser to the spoil board, and burn a layout grid. I'm going to show you all how I do this. It's actually pretty easy. Coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. In the last uh, couple of videos on this uh, ComGo Z1 laser, I first want to demonstrate how to put everything together in detail because some people are a little bit challenged with that so it's in extreme detail. If you're real good at this that would have been boring. Uh, the second video I did on this was setting it up in Laser Gerbil and Lightburn. So you've got your software all set up. Now what I'm going to be doing here is making what I call a spoil board. That's a board that goes underneath the laser. Right now it's just sitting kind of wonky on a piece of plywood because I don't want to catch a cardboard on my tabletop on fire if I would happen to fire the laser too much and I did that once. That's why I got a board under it. So I'm going to show you how I lay this out. Normally I do not permanently attach my lasers to spoil boards uh, in case I want to raise them up to use it with a riser or something but I will not be using a riser with this one. I've got some ideas of what I'm going to do with this one most specifically for making wood signs because we do a lot of those. So I can attach this one permanently down. I'm going to show you how I make all this. Okay, I got the table cleaned off here pretty much. So the first thing I need to do is figure out exactly what size I want to make it. Um, stepper motors stick out a little bit on each side. So I could make the board just the size of the frame, but in case I would ever want to put this and maybe build an enclosure around that, I want it to be wide enough so that I can uh, attach to the sides here. So width-wise, I'm going to go with, could do 23. I may just do 24. That's a nice even round number. And for the length here, I'm also going to do 24. So we'll just make a 24-inch square piece of MD, uh, half inch MDF. You could also use three-quarter if you wanted to. Uh, MDF stands for medium density fire medium density fiberboard. There we go. And normally I'd buy that in a full sheet, but I didn't have enough around here this morning. And when I went to the home store to get the sheet, it was raining like crazy. Well, water and MDF don't go together, but they do have what they call handy panels, which is just a little two foot by four foot panel. So that'll work out perfect. I'll just uh, get it up on the table saw here and cut it in half. Okay, with that being done, the next thing I'm going to do here is uh, for the, actually I'll probably do it on both sides, is I'm going to sand this down to 220 with 220 grit. Although it is very smooth, I like to make it even smoother and get some of that factory finish off the top for when I burn it. It always makes it a little darker and nicer. Okay, smooth. Another thing uh, I'm going to do is round over the edge. Uh, if you've ever worked with MDF, it chips and flakes very easily if you've got that sharp edge. So I'm going to take this through on the router table here with a 3 8 round over bit and just round over that edge so that it does, if I bump it into something it doesn't get that nasty chipping and flaking thing going on. Yes, that makes a lot of dust, and yes, I could have used this and hooked the back up to it, but just for this small, quick project, didn't want to go through the hassle of it. Wasn't that bad. Okay, so next I want to put some feet on here, so when it's setting down on a surface, it's a little bit easier to pick up, and it wouldn't ever scratch anything. Not that this would, it's pretty smooth, but if something would get embedded in it, I'd set it on another table and slide it like this, it could scratch it. So I'm going to put some rubber feet on this. So what I'm going to do here is come in an inch from each side. Yeah, we've got to set that for an inch though. An X. Now for the rubber feet, they're just very simple little rubber. Now they call them cutting board feet, but and that's what I have used them for. And then I'm using some small 
half inch long flathead screws. And yes, that's an old school 18 volt DeWalt, but it still works. Okay, so next I've got this kind of set on the board where I want it. On the stepper motor on the left side here, I'm taking it over pretty much right to the edge, which leaves me a little bit of extra space over here in case I should ever decide to get wild and put a drag chain on here. Although this, because of the way this is made and sleeved, it doesn't get into the work area. It always stays out there, so that's a good thing. This here never gets into the work area. It always stays up in the air, and there's been some other lasers I've had where especially this one here has been a real problem. I've had to add drag chains to it. So this is exactly where I want to set it. Uh, I've toyed around with a couple different ideas on how to mount it to the board. One was to drill some holes down through the feet this way, put a T-nut underneath and bolt it down, drilling some quarter inch holes in the bottom of the legs. There's some little rubber pads that come on there from the factory because I'm going to be mounting this this way. I actually scrape most of that raw off. A little bit of adhesive is there yet. Using a quarter inch drill bit, I'm going to be drilling down through the leg. I'll do it on all four corners. Be careful where your shavings go if you're going to do this. Don't get them into the motherboard or the limit switch or the head or anything else. Okay, now that I got this back in the position I wanted on the top, I just need to go and mark my holes. So what do you do with carpenter pencils when they get kind of wore out? Well, you save them until you got a little stubby when you need to get in places like this. If you've never used T-nuts before, this is what they look like. Uh, there's a little collar here. This is These are for quarter 20 inch bolts. And because there's a collar here, I need to drill my hole to 5 16 Then there's some little teeth here that I'll just invert the board over, take a hammer and drive those down in, and they'll stay there. I'm putting a board underneath so I don't get a bunch of tear out when this goes through. It also keeps me from drilling into my table. Now it's just a matter of turning the board over. Set these T-nuts in their spots. And with a hammer, just drive them in. Well, I'll get this flip back over. I put a little F on there somewhere for the front so I don't get this backwards. So, Set the laser back in place. And I'm using some quarter 20 hex head by half inch bolts. Okay, so there we have it. Now I just need to get everything moved around and cleaned up and we can burn that grid on there. And make sure after all this fooling around that it actually came home where it's supposed to. This I'm going to be engraving directly on the spoil board here. I need to set the focus for this. It's actually kind of close right now, but it needs to drop down just a little bit. And the screws tighten back up. Okay, I got the laser hooked back up and back on the table here. We'll open up laser gerbil. And we need to connect. That'll help if I turn the laser on. Need to unlock it. Okay, we are unlocked. Need to load my file. Of course, we're using the uh, Laser Master 2 Pro Grid. And there it is. So, what I want to do first here, what I want to do first here is take this home. Hit the home button here. Make sure after all this fooling around that it actually came home where it's supposed to. Well, the next thing I want to, well, I better make sure we stayed home. Nope. Yep. Okay, we're good there. Now, the next thing I want to do is frame this to make sure that after all my fooling around, I didn't move a limit switch or something. And this does take a little while to make that travel around there. And you can follow that little blue cursor there in Laser Gerbil. You can see as it goes across the top of that grid. You can see where the laser position is. Well, I ran into a little bit of a problem. Okay, what had happened was, while I was fooling around with this, 
the motherboard control box right here has shifted back just a little bit. It has shifted back just a little bit and it was enough that the head was actually hitting the screws on the back. So I had to uh, loosen the screws up underneath and move this back out forward. So we're going to frame it one more time here to make sure everything's good now. Okay, we're good to go. So I just need to hit start. Now if something should go awry, there is a machine alarm. Well, I don't know what that is. Normally I would do this uh, in two passes, but because this is a 10 watt laser, it's burning a nice black line. The total engrave on this is uh, almost two hours and 50 minutes or something. It's telling me two and a half hours. So we'll let it go here and we'll uh, check back on this from time to time. I'm going to have to go open a door. We're going to be clouded with smoke in here. Okay, so you're running along just fine and all of a sudden it just stops. Well, why? Well, look over here in the lower right hand corner. It says status cooling. It has actually stopped to let that laser head cool off. And once it cools, it will resume. At least it's supposed to. And after a few minutes, you can see it's running again. It just uh, will we'll stop for a while to let that laser head cool off. And if it does fail to restart, you can always click on the little guy there that's running. Okay, the grid is complete and I'm adding a little something else. Uh, I always put a pattern on any of my boards for the four and a quarter inch square ceramic tiles that we engrave a lot of. And I had a little text underneath uh, that box that I burned in there. So there's how to build a spoil board for your laser, how to mount the laser onto it, and a couple little uh, extra features I'm adding for my own use and feel free to do the same thing. Um, I've created this other little graphic and square in light burn because I'm quick with it. So if you got anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up always helps the channel if you like to get one of these lasers there will be a link in the description. Uh, the board of course you go to your local home store get a piece of MDF and a little bit of hardware and away you go. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.